The uh, topic of today's lecture is MVC and Java servlets, which is going to allow us then to use Java servlets in a structured way to provide an architecture for our internet applications. The idea of a software architecture is that it provides for us an abstraction of a software system. An abstraction is really just stripping out the details to look at the high level information to allow us to focus on the major components without being distracted by the low level detail. With a view of only the high level components we can then see the structure much more easily. And when we devise some kind of abstraction for our software architecture it means that we're then able to take that abstraction and implement it in different ways. What I'm going to say in a few minutes about MVC will be applicable to any kind of software uh, that uses that architecture. Although we'll be looking at it in the context of Java servlets, you could use these same principles in a Java program, a C program, and any other kind of programming language that you want to make use of. Why do we want to use an abstraction? Well, the first thing that it does is to reduce complexity. As I said a few moments ago, it strips away the low-level detail and allows us to focus on what's important at the time. The other thing that it does is aim to reduce complexity by separating concerns. The idea of a concern is really tied up in terms of responsibility and function. Who is responsible for doing something? And when they do it, what do they actually do? What's the process? What's the function that they perform? And we apply that concept to our applications by focusing on responsibility and function and identifying those components that deal with a particular area of functionality. And we try not to allow any crossover of responsibility and function. And so as we define the individual component types, we identify their concerns in terms of function, the properties that they need in order to perform that function, the relationships between the various component types and the way in which they interact. Why do we want to do this? Well, there are several advantages of, of having an architecture. The first thing is that it allows us to standardize our designs. When we have a web application that we want to develop, if we've already got in mind that we're going to use, let's say, MVC, then we immediately understand the basic structure of that internet application. Therefore, we can view our interactions with the user in a certain way. And those interactions will have a certain structure. And therefore, we're able to very quickly identify the bits and the pieces, the components that we shall need for this particular application. Another advantage is that we have a shared understanding. Shared with whom? Well, with other developers. We might be working as part of a large team in developing a very large internet application. And if we've got a, a common understanding of what the system design should be, because we're all using the same architecture, then that helps in communication. It helps in development. It helps in debugging. It helps in the ongoing maintenance. It also helps in terms of the longer term, because it's not just that development that we have lots of people involved. There will, over the course of perhaps many years, be lots of people involved in maintenance and change of the system. Because the architecture, presumably, has been tried and tested over time, and indeed with MVC that is the case, it's been used in all kinds of places for a very long time, it means that we have an enhanced quality of our design and implementation. And if it's got an enhanced quality, that means it's going to be a better system. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, it improves maintenance because we're able, as soon as we know that we're using MVC as the architecture, we're very, we can very quickly find our way around the system. And improved extensibility simply means that we can add additional features in without too much problem. Because the architecture, as you will see in a few minutes, lends itself to adding in components. Some of the disadvantages though, well the fact that you're using this level of abstraction means that you've got to think about things a little bit more before you start doing it. It's not just a case of diving in and writing some code. We have to start planning a little bit before we write the code. So we're going to have to think carefully about how to match what we are using for the implementation to the architectural components. 
And what we're going to have to think about, first of all, is how we match servlets to the MVC components. There's a design overhead. As I said, you've got to think about it, but you've also got to plan it. And having made your plan, you then implement according to that plan. Well, this design will take time and that's an overhead, but that is offset by improvements in quality, productivity, maintainability. You can improve your productivity quite a lot simply by doing the plan first because that's where you do all the creative thinking. All the hard decisions are made really during the design. Then, having done that on paper or electronically, it doesn't really matter, but having done it up front, you've thought about all those difficult problems and you've come up with solutions. So that when it comes to implementing, your productivity at code time is enhanced considerably. Not only that, but when you come to use this architecture at implementation time, you're going to build the components and have those components interact in a predefined way because the architecture defines what those components are and how they interact, how they communicate and so on. So all of that is set out for you in the, in the architecture and therefore you don't have to spend time thinking about that at implementation time. One of the other disadvantages of, a, of an architecture is that it can introduce a lack of flexibility. You might want to do a little tricky thing in a very special kind of way and maybe the architecture doesn't lend itself very easily to that. And so you'll have to think about whether you ought to do it in that little tricky, clever way or whether you ought to stick to some kind of standard architecture. Very often, although you might have to do that little tricky, clever thing in a slightly different way to make it fit the standard and therefore it isn't quite as tricky and clever as it would have been otherwise, that loss of cleverness, perhaps, is certainly offset by the usefulness of standardization, and this shared common understanding of how things work. The trouble with introducing tricky, clever things, of course, is that you might be the only person in the whole wide world that really understands how it works. And if you're no longer around for whatever reason to maintain that tricky, clever thing, of course, then that's going to cause really big problems for whoever has to come along behind you to clear up the mess.